I can hear you. I'm alive! I can't believe it! I'm alive! Here, I managed to hide this stuff before... You're right, it... I... Dead. You saved me. They dropped. You're right, it's. I. Another wasteland survivor, huh? Sorry, but I don't got enough to share. Get your own copy of the book and do your own hunting. Ain't you heard of the Wasteland Survival Guide? 
Bought one off a trader, and it's the reason my family's back up to two meals a day. Is that so? Well, thanks, stranger. You and that Moira girl done all right by me and mine. Nice writing. Outsider, you have arrived. Please come closer. I have something of the utmost urgency to speak to you about. Do hurry. He doesn't like to be kept waiting. I'm so glad you're here. It's been a while since anyone's visited us, and he's been waiting for someone like yourself to arrive. If you wouldn't mind following me, I'll bring you right to him. I'm sorry. In my excitement, I got ahead of myself. I'm Tree Father Birch, and I have the great fortune of being leader of his people, the Tree Minders. Beyond that gate is our home, Oasis. Yes, we're the Tree Minders. We're his people. If you'll just follow me inside to the pavilion, all will be explained. Excellent. Please follow me. 
All will be explained soon. Reach Welcome, outsider. Rejoice! The Great, one wishes, the great one wishes to see you! Like the Great One himself, we welcome you with outstretched arms. Welcome, Outsider. You have no idea how overjoyed I am to see you. Normally, Outsiders are forbidden inside Oasis, but he has made an exception. No, I suppose you haven't. In fact, few who live outside of Oasis have. Everything you see around you, from the tallest tree to the smallest blade of grass, is a gift. A gift from him. He's no mere god, my friend. He is the one who grows. He is the one who gives. And he is the one who guides. Thanks to him, the tree minders have a home. I would have preferred that he made the introduction, but I understand your hesitation. The Great One is a god tree. A living, breathing, speaking god tree. The tree minders are blessed to have this being watch over us. Is it so strange to care for one's home and keep it safe from those who would seek to exploit it? He gives to us, so we give back to him. It's an arrangement that's worked well for almost two decades. We shun technology and embrace nature. That's the life of a tree minder. Sadly, the Wasteland is a hostile place, and sometimes we're forced to defend ourselves against it. If that means fighting with manufactured weapons, then so be it. Had he not asked to see you, you never would have gotten this close to the gates. You have much to learn about patience, my friend. However, you are correct. I will get to the point. As you approached Oasis, he said you were coming, and I was sent out to meet you personally with a request. He wishes to meet with you. You'd be the first outsider to do so in a very long time. Yes, person. To meet him, you must undergo the ceremony of purification. Once that's complete, you'll be able to speak to him. Whenever you're ready, we may begin. It's simple, really. You drink the sap from the basin here in the pavilion. The sap will purify your mind and body of anything harmful that could possibly hurt him. I assure you, nothing harmful will happen to you. Very good. Take your place in front of the basin, and let's begin.
drink of the sap from the basin. Only then and will he reveal himself. We will now recite the blessing to ward off any harm the outsider may be carrying before he proceeds to the grove. I bid you depart, agents of destruction, through the power of his divine will. Leave our homes and bodies immediately. Live no longer in them, but pass over into places where you can harm no one. In the name of his frondescence, I call his wrath upon you, so that wherever you may go, you bear it with you. And, diminishing from day to day, you may disappear, except where you serve the health and good purposes of mankind. May no trace of you be found. All this, may he be so good as to grant us, who is to come to judge the living and the dead, and the world by his verdure. Amen. Soon, you will pass peacefully into sleep, outsider. And when you awake, you will witness his glory firsthand. to see you're finally awake. I can't believe they made you do that stupid ceremony. <laughs> they listen when I talk, but they don't hear. You know what I mean? Neither have I. Well, I mean, I talked to Herbert, but he never really says anything back. <laughs> Do you, Herbert? He kept growing around me. Maybe for calling him Herbert all the time. His name's really Bob. I think it's funny when I call him Herbert, though. <laughs> well, I suppose you could look at it that way. See, Bob used to ride around on top of my head, sunk his roots in, right in there, you know? Well, eventually, he got bigger than me, and then I pretty much ended up inside. It was a long time ago. I tend to lose track. I was exploring some sort of a military base with 
some other people. I think it was called Mariposa. We were pretty deep inside, and we found some weird vats of this nasty green goo. Right when we were about to leave, I think we were attacked. Last thing I remember before blacking out was something knocking my friend into the stuff. Yes, yes, I do. Or, I guess, we do. Me and Bob, that is. I had you brought in here to ask a very simple favor. Would you please kill me? Oh no, 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 no. It wouldn't be murder. You'd be doing me a favor. You see, I've been stuck here for over two decades now, rooted right into the ground. The only friends I've got are Bob and those weirdos out there who think I'm a god. Decide to go down there, I'll have a little chat with Birch and the rest of the gang. They usually don't understand a word I say, but I'll make them come around. Now, how exactly am I supposed to? do that. I can barely move anymore. Thanks to Bob, I'm obviously not going to be doing anything for a very long time. How to put this? I've been feeling rather spread out lately. I think Bob's kind of shoved my insides around some. <laughs> it's hard to tell where everything is, but it's always that way with one's insides, isn't it? Anyway, I believe Bob's carried some of my organs into his root system. I want you to go underground and destroy my heart. is an unusual request, but hey, I'm an unusual tree, huh? <laughs> well, Bob is, anyway. We'll just keep it an open invitation then. I don't want to wait until the next person visits. It could be years. You're all I've got. No, no, Herbert is the tree. Bob is his real name, but I call him Herbert. I think it's pretty funny, but I'm still in here too. What's left of me, the name's Harold. Look, Herb. 
Herbert. He I've been literally rooted to this spot thanks to Bob for maybe 20 or 30 years. I can't even remember anymore. Can you imagine being stuck in one place for that long? Not being able to eat or to read or to sleep or anything? In the meantime, I have these tree minders bothering me every day about things I don't even care about. And I can't stand it anymore. I've tried to stay happy. Really, I have. Bloomseer Poplar thinks I'll live for hundreds of years. Maybe even more. Can you imagine that? Stuck here for centuries? I can't do it. I just want to be alone. Just me and Bob until the end. When I saw you coming towards Oasis, I thought I felt that you'd understand me. I guess I was wrong. I'm telling you, it is possible. Or maybe I'm just losing my mind from all this boredom. I swear, if I try real hard, I can see all around me. Like, like, like my eyes are in every leaf on every tree. I think it's making Bob kind of jealous. Because he was the first tree in my life and all that. It's kinda embarrassing, really. Once a year, Bob decides he's gonna go ahead and, and start growing these weird pods filled with tiny seeds. Well, all it takes is a good wind and the seeds just fly everywhere. I call them Herbert Seeds. <laughs> he hates that. Yeah, I'll leave it to good old Bob to get me stuck above some caves. Now, um, my dang feet are cold. Sometimes I feel stuff tickling me, but I think that's just Bob getting back at me for all the times I call him Herbert. <laughs> I think the best way for you to get down there would be to get the key from the one those loonies call Cypress. There's supposed to be some old gate or something back in the other grove. Okay. Oh, okay. Look, Herbert. Don't.
There's nowhere like this left in the world and So you're the outsider, huh? You seem nice to me. My parents told me never to go past the old gate. There are monsters in there. Oh, you mean Harold? He's really nice. Sometimes when I get really lonely, I go into the grove and talk to him. Sometimes I even curl up all cozy-like and sleep next to his root after I have a bad dream. I tell him what I'm scared of, and he tells me what he's scared of. It makes me feel better knowing I'm not the only one. Aw, I never knew an outsider could be scared of anything. Harold told me that he's scared of fire. If fire ever got on him, it would burn him and Bob until they were all gone. That's why we keep the fires far away from him. Just get born, I guess. <laughs> You're funny. I was born here, silly. This place is wonderful. It's very nice to meet you, outsider. I'm Branch Tender Linden. I was found dying in the wastes not far from here by a trader caravan. They knew about this place and brought me to Bloomseer Poplar. She nursed me back to health and I've stayed ever since. I was a Brotherhood of Steel outcast. We had a deep patrol out here looking for some tech, and they got jumped by some death claws. They shredded everyone else and left me bleeding to death. If it wasn't for Oasis and Bloomseer Poplar, I'd be dead right now. Honestly, I've never seen anything like this place. It's beautiful. It's a shame only a few people will ever get to see it. Oasis is located near what used to be an old mining town before the bombs fell. When the attack started about 200 years ago, many people took shelter in the natural caves that dotted the area. The old gate that stands at the mouth of Oasis Cave is the last piece of architecture from those days. Well, I'm not so sure the Great One is a god. I mean, I don't believe in that sort of thing. However, I am beginning to realize he's special. Something greater than any of the creatures in the wasteland. I sort of fell into it, I guess. I woke up here and I just stayed. After a while, I became one of them. May the sap... There's nowhere like this left in the world anymore. Oh, outsider? Allow me to introduce myself. I'm Bloomseer Poplar, soothsayer and healer of Oasis. It brings me great honor to welcome you. Be wary of the water in the caves. I fear they still carry the sting of radiation from the bombs. In what we call the harvest month, the Great One creates seeds among his branches within seed pods. At the end of this time, the pods open and the seeds are carried quite easily upon the wind. It's quite beautiful. Wherever the seeds take purchase, they grow into trees, plants, grass, or all manner of wonderful things. I was the third one to arrive here in Oasis. Tree Father Birch was a bit wary at first, but Leaf Mother Laurel convinced him to let me stay. 
If she hadn't been around, I doubt Birch would have ever let me stay here. After a while, they taught me their ways, and together we developed the ceremony of purification that you undertook. He's not my god. He's everyone's god. You, me, everyone. This place isn't meant just for the tree minders. It's for all mankind. You'd think they'd realize that this place won't remain a secret forever. The caravans know about it, and you happened upon it. How long before someone comes to take this place by force? No, I say allow oasis to grow, and that issue becomes moot. My father was a healer like myself. He had the most curious books I would read about trees and plants and their medicinal properties. Many years later, I heard a rumor about a place such as this. I spent a decade in search of it. I've been in this wonderful place for over 15 years now. Farewell. You're a guest among us, and quite welcome, outsider. Yes, what can I do for you on this beautiful day? I was brought here by his will. I heard his calling, and I followed. I believe only a few are worthy enough to find this place, and I'm honored to be among them. That's why I dread the day Oasis overgrows its boundaries. I suppose so, but you found it. How many others will stumble across Oasis? Will they be friendly? I'm worried, outsider. I'm truly worried. I had to accept the ideals of Tree Father Birch and cast away my dependence on technology. He is the Great One, the Tree Father of Tree Fathers. There is no greater being in the world than he. I've dedicated my life to protecting this place from the outside world, and I will never fail in that duty. There telling you, you've got it all wrong. Why else would he have called for an outsider's assistance? The outsider is here to deliver us from our enemies, to keep this place safely locked away from the wasteland, not to exploit us. How can we preach about peace when all you want to do is keep his gift all to ourselves? That's not what he would want. If we allow the spread of this miracle to continue, we're putting him in jeopardy. I can't allow that. I won't allow it. Once again, my husband, we are at an impasse. I suggest we speak to the outsider. Agreed. Why else would the outsider have been allowed into the grove? Perhaps it's a test. Yes, that must be it. I know why you're here, and despite what my wife thinks, I know you'll do what's best for Oasis. After all, he chose you, and he would never want to put us in harm's way. Oh, he's testing you now, just like he tested us. He wants to see if your faith is strong by spinning these incredible stories. Who else but a god could produce all of this? Don't worry. You'll soon see things as I do. Yes, I've been pondering that riddle myself for some time now, and I think I know what he's trying to tell us. The Great One's influence is growing, 
and soon it will break free of the confines of this secluded vale. We can't allow Oasis to call attention to itself like that. It would be the end of him. You misinterpret his words, my friend. He wants you to extinguish that which seeks to make him vulnerable. If the same sap that you drank to purify yourself could be applied to his heart, it should stop the spread. I can promise you no harm would come to him. That's all I ask of you, outsider. Nothing more, nothing less. I love Birch, but sometimes I think he doesn't see the big picture. The spreading of his influence is not a curse. It's a great miracle. A benefit meant for the entire wasteland. Of course we do. He yearns to share his miracles with the whole world. To give the gift of life back to the dead wasteland. It's upsetting him to no end. But Birch can't see the pain it's causing. But now that you're here, I have a feeling the winds are about to change. I heard what my husband wanted you to do. What I propose is an alternative. The same person that created the sap also created this liniment. If you can reach his heart, it will assist in making his influence increase. Instead of centuries, the wasteland will become green in mere decades. Just imagine how glorious that would be.